Hey everyone, we are live at five. I'm Paul Wontorek. I'm Andy Lefkowitz. And oh my God, Matt McGrath is here, who's in this fantastic off-Broadway play, Lonely Planet, that I love, and we're gonna talk about it. Uh, but first, we have some news. We sure do. What, what's the, well, I guess I kind of had a big, am I going first or are you going first? I'm gonna go first. <laughs> go for it, dude. I, I got mixed up on the pages. But uh, Once in This Island, yes. I just wanna tell everyone I got this, I, got, I finally got a peek of Once in This Island this, yeah. this morning because uh, they did a little press event. And it's, you know, it's just past 27 years since the original production. No way. Which officially means I'm reaching my late 40s, if I saw it that long ago. Uh, and it, it looks so good. I mean, wow. we finally got to sort of see, we got, saw some numbers, there's video on the site, there's photos on the site. Uh, it's going to be a big, a big Broadway show. So nice. I'm very excited. And there's wait. a lot of, by the way, hints about things you're going to encounter at the theater. like maybe some nature Ooh. elements and some things that I, I don't know, no one would really say, but it sounds kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, they said they have to like sort of up it to compete with like King Kong or Holy things like moly. that. I don't know, that's what somebody said. Anyway, sounds pretty I'm cool. sorry, but, but, but go to the news. Yeah, all right, cool. So as you guys know, we have an upcoming Our Town benefit reading right. featuring the cast of The Avengers. <laughs> right. uh, Never thought you would say that. Yeah, right? I know, right? Uh, it's going to be taking place at Atlanta's Fox Theater, and two new cast members joined today. Jeremy Renner and Maximiliano Hernandez have joined previously announced Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson, Robert Downey Jr. Scar Joe. Chris Evans will be on Broadway next year in Lobby Hero, mm -hmm. and Mark Ruffalo. So yeah, that's pretty starry. Yeah, it's a kind of a crazy group of people. And I'm yeah. curious about what the actual play, how they're actually doing the play. Yes, because we don't know what roles they're going to play. Or uh, if they are, or if they're reading it. I don't know, we'll, right. we'll, we'll see what it is. But we will. And of course, all the money is going to yes, Puerto Rico. It is, um, it is. Rebuilding efforts, yeah. Awesome. Uh, okay, Robert Guillaume died, you guys. So Robert sad. Guillaume, Benson. I loved Benson so much when I was a kid. Uh, mm -hmm. Lived to a good 89 years. Yes. And of course, he also was uh, the first African-American actor to play the Phantom. He played the Phantom really early on, like, like I think a year or two after it premiered yeah. on Broadway. It went to LA. Uh, and of course, Norm Lewis wound up being the first African-American Broadway Phantom. Uh, and uh, yeah, he was amazing. He played Benson. I think it started on Soap, right? And then it became yep. its own show, Benson. Huge hit when I was a kid. He got a Tony nomination for playing Nathan Detroit in the 1976 all African American production of Guys and Dolls on Broadway. And uh, it's sad, sad day, but, but you know, lived a great life and, and had a great career. Yes. Uh, so two off-Broadway productions have been extended. Uh, the signature theater revival of Stephen Adley Gurgis's Jesus Hop the A Train has been extended two weeks to November 26th. And Harry Clark, a new play by David Kale, starring Billy Crudup, was extended to December 10th today. Uh, it's a solo play starring Billy Crudup. Right. So yeah, thumbs up for Off-Broadway More chances theater, to yes. see those shows. Uh, so we just found out about a brand new TV pilot right before we came in here, yes. which sounds very exciting. Ryan Murphy, who of course you know makes like five new series a year, just announced a show called Pose, and this sounds right up my alley. Yes. Uh, it is for FX, and it features a large number of, of transgender actors, mm -hmm. including MJ Rodriguez, Broadway's MJ Rodriguez. Uh, and Pose is set in the 80s in New York City, and it's sort of set in the, the balls, uh, the voguing balls and the drag balls. Uh, go rent Paris is Burning. If you've never seen it, shame on you. But it's going to be kind of set in that world. And Guess who else swirled up in there? A certain Tony winner. Mr. Billy Porter. Yes. Mr. Billy Porter will also be in there. Uh, and Billy Porter has a connection to today's guest, by the way. Ooh. Yep, we're going to get to that. Indeed. Look at that. And uh, the upcoming uh, Carnegie Hall benefit performance of The Children Monologues, which is oh, going, right. we already know it's big, it's starry. Audra McDonald is involved, David Diggs, Charlize Theron. Uh, we found out today that. Cynthia Erivo and Catherine Zeta-Jones are also going to take part in that. Oh, cool. uh, so yeah, it's a big, uh, important benefit uh, to benefit the creative arts agency Dramatic Need. And it's going to be on November 13th at Carnegie Hall. Cool. Yes. Sometimes Wendy Williams has Broadway people on, she right? Does. And sometimes she's on Broadway. Yeah. That happened. She was in Chicago, right? She was right next door yes. in Chicago for a while. Uh, anyway, today she had on Trista Dollison and Alan H. Green of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and they sang 
Queen of Pop. Yes. That was fabulous. And the audience ate them up. And you can watch the video on the site. Indeed. Is that it? And that's it. Is that it. everything? Yeah. We okay. have Matt McGrath, guys. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back with Matt. On the outside, always looking in, will I ever be more than I've always been? Because I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass. I'm waving through a window. Go ahead. Throw your rocks at me. Baking a pie is easy, if you know how. I'm still standing. If only life were as easy as pie. Waitress is a hit, raised the New York Times, with songs by Grammy-nominated artist Sarah Bareilles, an uplifting celebration of love and laughter. Sugar butter flower. Broadway's Come From Away is a Best Musical winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away, the remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed the world. Hey guys, we are back on Live at Five, and I'm joined by Mr. Matt McGrath. Hi, how, how are you? Sir. Good, Good to you? see you. Thanks for having uh, me. You are in this brand new, uh, very well received off Broadway production of a play that I fell in love with in the 90s called Lonely Planet, and it's at the Keen Company. It is. And how are things? How's it going? It's going great. I mean, it's a really a powerful piece, and it's really deceptive in how it unfolds, and uh -huh. it's really fun at the beginning of you know, these characters are just lying to one another and playing games, and it's just, it's a mile a minute. But uh, right. when it settles in and you find out what they're covering for, it's it's pretty pretty powerful stuff. So let's tell everyone about Jody and Carl. That's who we're dealing with, right? Yeah. Two friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in a map shop, right? Yeah. If I remember correctly, there's there's some love of maps in, in this play. Yeah. Uh, what And it's set, at, at what what's, when is it set? It's set in uh, the late 80s, right. and it's r the productions in New York were in 94, it was right. kind of later, but they did it in Seattle uh, earlier than that okay. with, I, I think, friends of yours, actually, right? Yeah. So, um, well, the original, yeah, they were originally off Broadway, by the way, it was Dennis O'Hare. Yeah. Uh, and Mark Shannon, who is a good, uh, the late Mark Shannon, who's a great friend of mine. But right. Yeah. Uh, they were in the original production. Yeah. And so it's set in the late 80s, yeah. and that's sort of important to, to what we're dealing with. Yeah. yeah. So there are, these friends are dealing with... Um, you know, as it says uh, on the poster, it's like friend, friendship in times of crisis. So um, they're dealing with the AIDS crisis and yeah. how they're dealing with it um, uh, is really, uh, it's all of their idiosyncrasies are right on the surface and they're just trying to survive the day and, uh, you know, and help out when they can. And uh, at least Carl is and, uh, and Jody has his own thing going on and, and we kind of slowly mm -hmm. un unwrap right. that. In the, right. in the play. Right. And you're playing Carl. I play Carl, yeah. Right. And who's playing Jody? Jody is Arnie Burton. The, the great Arnie Burton. The great yeah. Arnie Burton, yeah. Yeah. And it's so fun to think of you guys together. Have you, I'm trying to think of what you've done. Have you done anything together? No, but we were in a theater company together when I was 19 years old. Which uh, theater company was that? It was the Circle Repertory Theater oh, Company. Oh, Circle Rep. In yes. Sheridan Square, yeah. yeah. So and didn't this actually play at Circle Rep? I, uh, uh, did it? I don't know. No, not I, yeah, I, know I think it had it. I think it has a little history with Circle Rep. Oh, wow. Circle in Rep, the lab, maybe? Or, uh, yeah. But uh, so yeah, Circle Rep was a great theater company. Yeah, yeah a lot of great things. Um, didn't I see you in a play there called Amulets Against the Dragon Forces? Yeah. Did I just pull that out of my head? Right. I did. I used to love going to see plays at Circle Rep. Yeah. Down in the village. Now it's the garage restaurant. I now think, it's a restaurant. Think, yeah. Not great theater happening These there, but maybe happen, a good yeah. burger. Maybe a good burger. I don't know. <laughs> Isn't it crazy when when you uh, reach a point where you sort of can really see your history in the theater world like that? Oh yeah, it's interesting. People will stop me on the street, and you never know what they're gonna <laughs> right. You know, show they're gonna say. pull out. Right. Well, yeah, I mean they could say anything, but uh, when when you do get uh, you know a nod to a, a circle rep player or something like yeah. that, that that feels good because yeah. not many people got to see those. I'm, I want to hear about your, if we can just take it back, the way back machine for a minute. You actually made your Broadway debut as a kid. Yeah. How old were you? Like eight years old? I was eight, yeah. Eight years old, and you were in Working. Mm -hmm. 
which is, you know, a lot of people know Working because there's great songs in Working. Sure. And you were a newsboy, is that right? I was the newsboy, yeah. You played newsboys more than once. This is a, thing, <laughs> this is a trend. Um, not newsies, everyone. Calm no, down. He didn't do newsies. No. Uh, but, um, yeah, what was that like? I mean, with that crazy cast, including Patti LuPone, of course. and Right, so of the 17... Uh, cast members, uh, Patti LuPone was the only one of us that didn't have a solo. So. <laughs> right, which is crazy. <laughs> so we kind of we closed in two weeks, let's put it that way. But uh, <laughs> we, uh, I mean, it lives on and it's been done in every college and yeah. you know, so many know. iterations of it uh, and uh, on television for television. And right, so. yeah, yeah. And of course, it was created by Stud Circle and uh, the great Stephen Schwartz. So yeah. uh, working with Stephen Schwartz at eight was just a, a joy. And right. And I worked with Lynn Thigpen and Patty yeah. LuPone and Joe Montaigne and, yeah. and these amazing. Real, real amazing actors that were all 20, 25 oh or something God. like that. And how did they treat you if you were the child in the production? They were all fantastic. Yeah? Yeah. They were really teaching me as we went. Wow. I had really no you know, professional acumen to speak of there. Yeah. Even though I had done the operas at Met, the Met and the, okay. at the New York State Theater. Right. You know, they really taught me what it was to be a professional and, and things like that. Everybody was fantastic. So you, would you recommend uh, a life on Broadway for a kid? Like, like I, I wouldn't, an early start? I wouldn't, you know, snuff it out. Let's say, right. yeah. yeah. I think that giving a kid that wants to do that, it, 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 giving them that as a gift is, is really, it's spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. You also got to fly in Peter Pan, <laughs> which I think is something, I mean, everybody wants to fly. Not many people can fly on Broadway. No. Even Alphabet doesn't fly on Broadway. She oh, just, yeah. she just no. goes up. Uh, you flew, uh, right? You, and I flew across the country with too, Sandy yeah. Duncan, Sandy right? Sandy Duncan. And yeah. I, I toured for two years with it. Wow. At 12. Yeah. Wow. 11, 12. Was that fun? It was fun. I yeah. mean, two years is a long time to be on the road. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for a 12 year old. So, um, and we're gonna get to Hedwig because people love talking. Of course, oh. Hedwig. I mean, once you once you have Hedwig on on, on your resume, <laughs> I mean, that's sort of like it cements you in out. some. There's some club. I, I mean, there's there some is, club. Kind of. But I also want to talk about you had this amazing opportunity to have intimate stage time with Jessica Lange. I did. That was amazing, and that was in Streetcar Named Desire. Yeah. And you got to play the newsboy. That's what I was referring to earlier. Right. And you got to do that amazing scene with her. Yeah. And it was, such, I mean, that production when it came with Al Alec Baldwin was also in it. Um, that was such a huge event. Well, not a lot of people know this, but um, or remember, but James Gandolfini and Aida Totoro played Stephen Eunice upstairs. So, right. You know, we had half of the Sopranos. Wow. Up there. Yeah. Oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah. But what, what did you? Did, did it feel like you were in like a big event? I mean, that was like oh, a... Oh, yeah. I mean, not just that. Amy Madigan was Stella. Yep. I mean, everybody was yeah. was really... Um, it was amazing, the cast. So, uh, yeah. So, Jessica was... The only scene I had is really with Jessica. So, I would fly from Los Angeles, and I'd rehearse one day, and I'd fly the next week, and, and they let me you know, shoot this movie while I was doing that, and it was all really kind of heady, a heady time. And what was it like working with her on the, on the scene? It was uh, phenomenal. I mean, she was really, really um, going there um, into walking that edge of, you know, of her um, purchase on, on reality um, at that point in the play. And, uh, you know, so uh, we had just a wonderful time and we were very respectful of each other's process yeah. and stuff. And I tried to be as much as I could. And, and uh, yeah, it was really rewarding. Wow. Yeah, it was amazing. Amazing production. Um, so you did win, I don't know if you know this, but when Broadway.com first started in the year 2000, we gave out awards the very first year, and you won the Broadway.com Audience Choice Award. I just want to make sure yeah. you are remembered as an original winner. <laughs> uh, you won Favorite Replacement oh. for, and actually Sandy Duncan also won the same year. Your friend <laughs> Sandy won for Chicago, for, for Chicago, Roxy Hart. Right. And you won for Hedvig uh, for Favorite Replacement. Well, that's and very nice of you all. Thank you very that's much. A, I mean, I want to make sure people know that. It's very important to me. Uh, yeah, so was that, how terrifying was it to jump into that role? Well, I was the cover, I, I didn't think that I would be able to replace, I wasn't a name enough to keep the show running, so I opted to cover Michael Cerberus in the Los Angeles production, okay. so that I could at least get a chance to do it, because I wasn't, you know, they were talking about Sandra Bernhardt, and they were wow, like, it's yeah. between you and Sandra Bernhardt, and I think that was <laughs> like the last time I'm going to hear that ever. But. Uh, so when um, they had kind of a, a mishap and something went wrong, they had an empty spot slot to fill. So uh, they flew me right after we were done in LA and uh, I took over in a day. 
Wow. And having not really rehearsed myself um, very much. Yeah. And I met the band on stage because. Wow. Yeah. It was pretty fast. Well, maybe that's the best way to do that show, just to like throw you yourself. You just gotta do it. Just yeah. throw yourself in it. Right. Yeah. But watching John uh, Cameron Mitchell, uh, I saw the show plenty of times, and he's a dear friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And he took me out to lunch, and he said, "I need to come up with a list of people that can replace Michael because Michael's going to be leaving." Right. Uh, Michael's got you know this wonderful career, and um, uh, so uh, John and I sat down, and I said, "Let me audition for you." And he said, "Do you sing?" And I'm like, "Let me audition for you." Wow. And so when I went in to sing for them, um, they wanted to give it to me in the room, but yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you got it. And, yeah. and, and like I remember because Britney Spears was rehearsing her video next door, <laughs> and I'm trying to sing Hedwig <laughs> over Britney Spears, like, you know, hit me baby one more time. Or oh something. my God. That's <laughs> <laughs> and you also were the MC. I was. I yeah. took over in, yeah, uh, in Cabaret. Right after I did Hedwig. Yeah. yeah, because then they were like, well, he can sing and he can do this, so he can do this. Yeah, right? they just kind yeah. of plopped me in there. That yeah. was really, really a, a great time, too. I replaced Michael Hall, right. who, uh -huh. uh, you know, I trailed him for a couple of performances uh -huh. and watched how he did it and all. And that was really rewarding, too. He's a great actor and he's a fantastic performer. So. Yeah. Um, and so now you, you do a lot off Broadway. You've done a lot of TV and film. And by the way, I want to make sure everyone knows of a movie called The Broken Hearts Club that I love, <laughs> which was, you were in with Billy Porter. Yeah. But that was like one, like probably one of Billy Porter's first, I, I feel like, movie things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a great little movie, and I want everyone to look it up. So look it up. You can still watch it, right? I mean, I, I want to watch there. it tonight. It was, <laughs> it was a really uh, a great ensemble movie about yeah. a bunch of gay friends in L.A. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's, it's a beautiful movie. So I just... Throwing my, my recommendation in the ring. Thank you. Uh, so what, what kind of things excite you now? Like, why, why do you want to do A Lonely Planet and, uh, oh my God, the word lonely, it's a connection. Oh, not Broken Hearts Club, not Lonely. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Not Lonely Hearts. <laughs> not Lonely um, Hearts. But well, yeah, what kind of gets you excited now? What kind of projects? You know, the, uh, I've had a chance to develop the Legend of George McBride for the past yes, five years, right. which came to New York. Yeah, you know, after going from London to, I mean, from uh, from Denver to right. um, to New York, uh, and then to Los Angeles. We mm -hmm. took it to Los Angeles, so and that it's was done regionally long, everywhere now. Yeah, now yeah. everybody's doing it. Yeah, yeah. right. George McBride. Yeah, now it's, yeah. Now. So um, uh, that was it's such a joy to develop something new, you know. Yeah. Uh, but you know, when you get to revisit a play that you've never heard of. Or you know you read something that is that is just so beautifully rendered you mm -hmm. know in um, in this language is, is just uh, it's rare for something to hit you and you know everyone has their stories of the people that that they lost when mm -hmm. I was 12 years old you know all of my you know Indians and pirates like so many of them fell uh, during this period wow. and my parents you know of no fault in their own they didn't you know want me to see it or they didn't mm -hmm. know what it was whether I could you know, whether it was contagious at the time, early, early 1980s. Right, of course. Uh, so I didn't get to say goodbye to a lot of those people. Wow. And, uh, you know, hopefully some of my surviving friends from that period will come by and we can all kind of, you know, toast to our friends that we lost. Yeah, it's amazing. A lot of younger people, uh, or, you know, even in, the th in their 30s, don't realize what that was like at that time and how, how many people that were working on Broadway just saw such a huge uh, number of people in their Rolodex sort of disappear. Yeah. I mean, it really was. And that's what this play is about. I mean, yeah. this play is about how are you coping with, you know, watching 30 of your friends die in six months. Yeah. I mean, that's shocking. Yeah. So you're thinking a lot about the Cowboys and Indians these, am, these yeah. days as you're doing exactly. Lonely Planet. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and is it great developing something like that with Arnie and having such a close relationship? I mean, do you like doing a two-hander like that? Right. Well, you bring your own kind of expertise and your own idiosyncrasies to a role. And I'm sure Dennis O'Hare was fantastic in this yeah. role, but I didn't want to, like, you know, yeah. think about any of that. And uh, Arnie is so skilled from 39 Steps to the general inspector and, you know, things like that that he's done. Uh, it was great to watch him in those, those productions. Right. And I'm glad that I did as we... Right. Um, I got to work with him. Yeah. Uh, oh, Bradley just asked, would you do Broken Hearts on Broadway? <laughs> See Is that? I'm not script? the only one. Broken Hearts Club. Maybe, you know, I, they'll get to that. You know what? There will be. Someday we're going to announce that there's going to be a musical of Broken Hearts Club. Wow. I yeah. don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Um, 
What about George McBride? Would you love to do do it again? That that question came up. Um, I love the character. I mean, yeah. I started the, originated the character and stuff, yeah. and and Matthew has plans for it. You know, I'm sure that okay. you know there'll be. That's not the last you've heard of the legend. So yeah, uh -huh. keep an ear out. Awesome. Um, what was your craziest onstage moment in cabaret? In cabaret? Yeah. Oh, I tripped myself. I think I pulled my leather jacket out from underneath me. I was standing on it, and I went right over. That's probably the craziest thing. Well, I also brought people up on stage. I brought Howard Stern on stage and Tommy <laughs> Toon, and that that alone, just a sight gag. Anyone know, who's not seven me. feet tall? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't really have to say much after that, but uh, <laughs> they were game, and they were really great guys about it. Uh-huh. Um, Alec wants to know, did you see the most recent revival of Hedwig? What would you think of? Uh, I did. I saw uh, it early uh, on. I, yeah. I got to see, um, I got to see John do it. John, yeah. Yeah. When John, John went Kimber back Mitchell, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Was, really he in, was he in his... He uh, hurt his foot. Yeah. yeah, he was like sitting, yeah. I, I saw that sitting. person. That was fun. Yeah. That was a long night, but it was like fun. It was like the, the whole audience would have sat there like all night, like just keep going. Like just, it was so much, right. like it's he added so much stuff and it was... It was fascinating, yeah. Just, and yeah, everybody showed up for that performance. So. Are there any like dream classic roles you would love to do? Or are you, are you that kind of actor where you think about in the back of your head something you would just love to tackle? Yeah, I mean, I, I've always wanted to do Shakespeare and you know, I, I, pers I don't know why I've avoided it all this time, but- uh, You've never done it. I've never really done it. Never really I've done it. I've studied it, but you know, I, I yeah. haven't really done it. Yeah, yeah. And I've been asked to do it, but the timing was wrong or okay. I was busy with other things, so. So someday maybe you'll- Someday. Someday you'll tackle yeah. that. Someday. <laughs> uh, what about a dream musical role? Do you think that way about musicals or mus is musicals sort of like a, a side talent you have? Or do you think like, I would love to go do this? Um, I don't pursue them, but I, right. when they come up, they're usually spot on. Like somebody you uh -huh. know, was like, you'd be good at, as that. And it, right. they're usually right. Uh, I did have to chase Hedwig to a degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wanted to. I mean, it was a rock show and it was, it was just good on my voice. I mean, mm -hmm. I, could, I, could, I knew that I could sing that. And right. um, yeah, I mean, I think that I did well with Cabaret. I mean, uh, yeah, I think things like that. I mean, it's usually the off. Yeah, the right. off character uh -huh. is a yeah. good match for me. You're a little off. I'm a little off. You seem like such a normal guy, and then like you're good at being a little off. <laughs> oh, it's all yeah, <laughs> it's all a sham. <laughs> okay, well, everyone, we have to go, but you really should check out. I know you've probably never heard of Lonely Planet, but it's a beautiful play, and you really should go and spend a night with these two amazing actors and this great story and this great relationship, and uh, it's a really like rich theatrical night. Yeah. I have to agree. Yeah, yeah awesome. But, well, it's playing what? Through November 18th. It's at the Clerman Theater at Theater Row on 42nd Street, and it's part of the Keen Company. And uh, it's written by Steve Deeds, yeah. right? Yep. And go see it. Lonely Planet, Matt McGrath. Thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow at 5 o'clock with another great guest.